Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Heat Signature. This is the new game from the developers of Gunpoint. Perhaps most famous or at least noteworthy on the team that I'm aware of is Tom Francis. Former PC gamer, writer, and also uh, YouTuber. Creator of the Game Makers Toolkit series on YouTube. Uh, where he talks about game design, including specifically, I think, in reference to uh, Heat Signature. Which has been in development for a long time. Well... From a from a terrestrial standpoint, maybe. As a creator, maybe not. I think it's been in, in the works since like 2013, 2014. Well aware of it uh, for that time period, at least. What the heck is it? It is a space pirate simulator. You fly a ship, but most of the actual core gameplay mechanics take place in this kind of like pausable Hotline Miami situation. It's like a combat puzzler would be the way that I'd describe it. And to be honest with you, this is a bit of a weird let's look at for me. I did receive a review code for this, by the way. I should disclose that right off the bat, but it's 15 bucks on Steam. Uh, for the first, like, 30, 45 minutes I played this game, and I have played maybe two to two and a half hours so far, I was like, I don't really get it. It just feels kind of like a simpler Hotline Miami. I didn't fully understand the loop. But once I started to play around with the inventory items and the upgrades you can buy and stuff like that, I was like, this might actually be really, really good. I'm going to try to explain the discrepancy that I felt there and the kind of awakening that I went through by recreating it for you here as we play as one of these four characters. But uh, you'll see it for yourself, I think, as we get started. So I'm just going to pick a simple character here. Let's play um, Let's play as Vega Stonelock. Everybody has a, a personal mission, by the way, which you can see in the top right. Never touched it. They all start with uh, a certain amount of credits. This guy has more because I was recently playing as him off camera. But um, we'll play as somebody that's starting essentially from zero. And you can lose these characters and perhaps, I don't know, maybe recapture them at some point. But I doubt it. Um, we'll play as someone simple. So we'll play as Vega Stonelock. They start with five credits, which is the middle left. They start with a short blade and a subverter grenade. The short blade is a melee lethal weapon that has a quick recovery, a short dash, ra dash range, and is quiet, because it is a little bit of a stealthy game, depending on how you play it. And, um, Subverter Grenade is something we can throw that reprograms any electronics in the blast radius to work for you. Okay. By the way, the music might be a little bit on the quiet side here, and I apologize for that, but you'll, you'll hear some stuff as we get a little further in here. So the way that the game takes place, basically there's this big old strategy map I can look at. Um... We start out at this home node, and it's a persistent campaign, so it keeps... If you lose a character, you restart, but you still have all the stuff unlocked. And all of these, like, lit beacons here are uh, outposts that we have uh, liberated, essentially. We want to liberate all four of these, like, outposts at the uh, exits here, or strongholds, I should say. The Foundry, the Offworld, the Sovereign, and the Glitchers. But I haven't really been working towards any one of them in particular. Um, let's go back here. As we complete missions, we'll be able to unlock more and more nodes, and then we can work towards, uh, I guess, assaulting the stronghold. But for now, you start and you just get some jobs. Rescue Sunshine Gibbs with no living witnesses. Assassinate Zero Kanji. Steal the Gardener prototype. Or capture Jorin M and kill no one. So you can see, they've got difficulty levels. Easy, medium, hard, audacious. Some of them have clauses. Enigma is no living witnesses. Bloodless is you can't kill anybody. And they all have pay as well. We're going to start with an easy one here. And you can see the mission parameters. So we got a rescue Sunshine Gibbs. The, that's usually just someone's a prisoner. We go onto the ship and, and get them out in our pod. Leave no living witnesses. If you complete the mission but fail this clause, you'll only be paid 8 credits. No alarm response. The ship has gone rogue and cannot flee when the guards sound the alarm. So we have as long as we like to deal with it, which is good for our first mission here. And then we can get a, a profile of the guards as well. These guards have wrenches and the bosses have concussive guns. We can be killed, we can also be knocked out and then have to rescue ourselves. But it, that stuff isn't even worth talking about until we actually see it in the mission. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to belabor the point and explain something for you that's much more thrilling to see when you're actually doing it. So, there's a little bit of like light space travel here. We're flying our pod and we can zoom in and out dynamically here. It's just using the mouse to fly. It's not really like a, a mission critical sort of thing. Using the right mouse button, we can hit the brakes and uh, alternatively match the speed of something that we're trying to uh, do. Because our pod is basically something that allows us to breach these ships. It's a really, really neat uh, gameplay mechanic that I've never seen in anything else. But basically, we're intercepting these ships as they fly, docking with them. And then this is when we start uh, 
the Hotline Miami version of things, essentially. Now, I will say, if there's one complaint, I did, and I'm going to pause for a second here, I love the fact that you can zoom out basically to a, a galactic level and zoom in to basically like, hey, there's your character. But I will say, I think visually the game leaves a little bit to be desired. It's kind of like a... It strikes me as a little bit of a generic visual style, and that's probably the largest complaint that I have about the game. Uh, I knew I was going to play it because I liked Gunpoint, but when I saw other people playing it, I was like, it doesn't look that good. It looks a little... If you don't know what to look for in particular, it can look a little generic, I think. But apart from that, I've got almost exclusively good things to say here. So um, we're going to unpause and zoom out a little bit. Remember, we've got to leave no living witnesses, and we got as much time as we want. One thing you'll notice, guards have key cards. So this guy's got a level one key card. We need that level one key card to enter level one doors. I don't see any level one doors, so they might not exist on this ship, but um, he's got a key regardless for whatever reason. So what I'm gonna do, I only see one guard and one pilot. We're gonna kill the guard in the easiest way possible, which is essentially wait for him to move over in this direction. And then we're just going to charge up our wrench shot, and we can target him. Oh, sorry, it's not a wrench, it's a short blade. Um, we can target him, and when he gets close enough to us, just release the left mouse button. And then we'll cut him up. Uh, we can also take him, if we wanted to, for example. Um, we, we could throw his body in our pod. I don't know why we would want to do that necessarily. I don't think you get anything extra for it. Uh, we can also take his wrench. And we can equip that wrench. You know, you can put that on right mouse button instead of the subverter grenade. You can put it on left mouse button. And, uh, you know, use the uh, subverter grenade as your right mouse button. The wrench is non-lethal. Um, but it has a slow recovery. So that could be good or it could be bad. It also has a much larger uh, charge radius, as you can see right there. So, yeah, the, the gist of it is that there's, like, um, possible real-time combat... That's not quite turn-based, but it's kind of like pseudo-turn-based. Um, or not turn-based, but uh, possible is the way that I, I described it and, and would stick with. You can plan your actions out. You want to pause a lot so you can handle situations. Right now, you're probably thinking that this is very similar to the way that I thought of it earlier, which is it's Hotline Miami with two enemies, one of which wasn't even paying attention. Easiest game in the world, right? Uh, it gets way, way more interesting once we get a little further. But I wanted to show you the intro to this, so maybe uh, you would uh, feel a little bit more you you would resonate with my earlier opinions and then we'll get more and more complex as time goes on so we've completed our objective but another thing that's cool is that there's kind of a an implicit optional objective on every mission which is if you wanted to after you knock out the pilot and we did just knock him out not that that really matters i suppose you know what i guess we do want to execute him uh which we can do right here kill pilot um because we want no living witnesses so after that, though, we can fly the ship, and by one-tapping the F key, uh, we can fly it back to the nearest friendly base. And usually you get a little bit more in the way of rewards. Um, we can speed up time with the F key as well. You get a little bit more in the way of rewards for uh, depositing the whole ship instead of just the objective you were looking for. So here, um, No Living Witnesses paid us two. We got paid eight for the completion there. And I don't know if we got anything else for bringing the ship back. But really, we can do these missions rapid fire. We can do a bunch of easy ones in a row. That's not that interesting, though, I think. What, what if we tried to instead assassinate Breaker Yetta with no living witnesses? This is medium difficulty. So we have the Enigma Clause, no living witnesses, few guards. That's good. The alarm response time. If guards sound the alarm, you'll have 60 seconds to escape or take out the captain. Otherwise, we're going to be captured, and then we have to restart with a new character. Okay, so the guards have guns, the bosses have guns that could hurt us or kill us even, and an emergency shield, which puts up a temporary shield that reflects all damage. Let's give it a try. So, we'll, uh, we'll accept this mission. And we'll make our short blade our primary weapon. The wrench is fine as well. They're, they're both, uh, they both serve their purposes. I like the fact that the wrench is non-lethal, so you can use it for missions where maybe you want a bonus for not killing anybody. Uh, but you can also use it from afar, which I think is is really the thrill there. Um, the short blade, though, is lethal, which means if you take out an enemy, they're gone forever. Um, and it can be used much faster, but it's also uh, got a shorter range associated with it. So we're going to dock to this ship here. There are other pods that we can get, by the way, that all have their unique characteristics, as we'll, uh, as we'll see. So until we aggro somebody... We have nothing to be concerned about. We're just going to wait for this guy to come around the corner. and We're queuing up a, a short blade attack right now. Um, he's a boss, which means if we alert him, he is going to... Uh, 
he is going to put on a shield and also trigger the alarm. Now, as soon as you kill somebody, you can take their, um... You can take their weapon. You can also teleport any open items to you on the ship. Other things you can do here, we could pick up Guard Hardcastle, which I guess is uh, Nerd Cubed. Or we could um, remote control our own pod. We don't need to do that yet, but we probably will before the video's over. Uh, you know what? Let's dump off this body here as well, because, like, we don't need it. So we could now, if we wanted to, we could take that Guard's gun, for example, and make it our secondary attack. But I'm assuming it's going to be loud. We'll probably use that more than we'll use the Subverter Grenade. But let's uh, keep it as is for now. There's also a little ammo right here. Armor piercing rounds. Spelled the British way. I can respect that. Um, we could pickpocket guards as well and just steal their goods if we wanted to. But uh, I'm not that good at the game. So I try to avoid doing that uh, whenever possible. So we got his key card there because we killed him. And that opened up these doors for us. Or at least it allows these doors to be opened. Keep in mind, we can't have any living witnesses. Uh, so we'll kill the pilot. Which means we can take over the ship if we so choose. This guy's going to see the body and he might... Oh, he didn't see the body. Thank God. If he did, he would have set off the alarm. So we'll sneak behind this guy and kill him. Now we can get into this room. And there's a cargo crate in there. Um, which is giving us... A restockable subverter grenade launcher. This is where the meat of the game becomes apparent and is also very interesting. Because right now, I'm just hotline Miami-ing it. You can be much more creative in the way that you solve these combat puzzles, and we'll try to do so as the ships get harder and harder for us to surmount here. Hold the button to aim your shot. Grenade to co will come to rest at your cursor. Detonates after two seconds. Reprograms any electronics in the blast radius to work for you and is quiet. Medium capacity can be used three times. So now we have a, a, a refillable grenade launcher. Refills for free when we go back to home base. We could shoot that grenade at an enemy turret. All of a sudden, the turret kills all of the people that are in the room that are enemies. And we can just walk in and pick up the, the stuff that they drop. So obviously, we're going to you know keep the grenade launcher here. We probably won't end up using it this mission because I don't see any... Oh, there, there is an electronic. So you know what? We might as well give it a test here. It would shoot us if we... Walked out here right now. But if we do, like, that right there, all of a sudden that turret's on our side now. Now, you're not really going to see much benefit to that because, uh... Because there's no enemies over there. But we're about to succeed here regardless. So just queue up on this guy, dust him, ship secured. And we It was an assassination target, so we're already done. Uh, all we need to do is go back to home base. So a little bit more difficult, but still pretty easy. Keep it in mind, uh, I have played a little bit of this. Wait, where was the captain's chair? It was this red one right here? Yes, okay. So we'll just take the ship back. I still don't fully understand the purpose of taking the ship back, but I thought we got more money for it. We could also take some of the other loot that's on the ground, like a long-range crash beam. Turns off turrets, shields, and any electronics guard kit, even through walls. Hold the button to aim, release to crash. Only uses up a charge if it's successful. Okay, cool. Alright, so we'll fly back to base. I'm not going to buy anything just yet because we're still pretty early on here. Oh, there we go. Sold contents of Sovereign Ship Dulcie for two credits. So we got 34 credits for that, and we also got a new liberation. So you get these periodically by filling up the meter uh, that was at the bottom when we selected a mission. And we could... Uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. We could... Uh, Choose a liberation that maybe takes us a little closer to getting down here, like this one, for example. It also gives us defector number 005, play as Mati Kavnis, who's planning an audacious mission against the Glitchers to demonstrate their loyalty to us. And this uh, unlocks another base for us to use as home base, but allows us to also uh, slowly get closer and closer to that stronghold. Silent missions. This client values stealth above all, and all their operations are extremely delicate. It's crucial that the ship does not sound the alarm until after the mission's complete. If you fulfill a silence clause, you'll be paid significantly more than regular missions, but if you don't, you'll only receive partial pay. Okay. Um. No, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> That's my mistake. These are like, uh, these are optional challenges, and uh, they allow us to unlock things, but I don't necessarily trust myself to do that just yet. Plus, I'm I'm interested, like, the theme for this video is I want to start achieving missions with increasing complexity, because that's really where things took a hold for me. That's really where I started to be more interested in, uh, in the game, is when I realized that it's not just, like, 
Hotline Miami in space. There's actually, it's like Hotline Miami plus Deus Ex plus a little bit of gunpoint plus, you know, there's like a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it really is, it's it's a designed game. And I, I, don't, I don't mean that to just be like a pithy statement. As a defector, you need to complete this mission before independent stations will let you dock. Okay, I guess we'll try to do the mission then. What do I have? Armor piercing short blade and self-charging extreme range cl key cloner, which allows us to charge a, uh, or to, to clone a key from a guard at range, I think. Extreme range, okay. So we'll try the mission, but anyway. Um, it, there's a lot of different systems going on here and they integrate really nicely, but you have to meet them halfway. If you go into it and you're like, I'm just gonna play Hotline Miami style, you could probably uh, get quite far, but I think you're also missing out on, on part of the point here. All right, what's the mission? Rescue Journey Calder with a short blade and a key cloner. Let's give it a try here. This is new terrain for me as well. I've never seen this before. So we can clone guards keys from extreme extreme range i should say this guy does not have a key card on him does have a level one key card on him so i'm going to try to keep it as stealthy as possible i do still to this day i think a lot of people are going to disagree with me but I, I do find it a little messy there we go so we just clone the level one key visually i should say i find it a little messy um and this thing automatically recharges itself, which is obviously very nice for us. Oh, they saw us and they're gonna shoot and I'm an idiot. And now we've sounded the alarm. So, we're gonna start to slice people. Oh, but they got shields, I'm going down. Well, you know what, this does give me a good opportunity as I hold F to fast forward here, to show you another mechanic of the game. If you get caught and knocked unconscious, they eject you out of the, um, the airlock. And then there's a cool mechanic here where you know, you can remote control your pod. And the goal is to recapture yourself before you pass out. It's usually relatively easy. But to be honest with you, we're still going to fail this mission. Because in two seconds, that ship's going back to base and we're going to fail it. All right. Let me let me be myself again. You got a little bit of a feel for that. So we were playing as Stonelock. And we want to take a different mission here. Okay. Um, rescue Lemma Shoddy with no living witnesses, no alarm response. Wrench, concussive gun. This one's pretty easy as well. Um, but let's give it a try and let's try to use a little bit more of our, like, uh, long range hacking abilities. We'll earn some money and then we can use this money to, to buy some new stuff and show off some other mechanics as well. Um, so the other thing is you can also buy new pods. Like, our pod right now is extremely basic, but you can buy pods. Uh, the one example I've seen so far is this angel pod, which, uh... I purchased on one character and then died with them, or rather was captured. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it allows you to, whenever you have to rescue yourself, you can actually use basically like a, an arm to reach out and grab yourself if you just get within a certain range. So it makes the rescues a lot faster. Okay, so we picked up some armor piercing rounds. We got three guards in one room here. I don't love it. How are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? We could shoot them with a gun. It's lethal. The other thing we could do is maybe queue up a couple of attacks. Like, for example, make the gun our secondary thing here, and then go like this. So, what, what are we going to do? We're going to stand here. Actually, we, let's do this with the wrench. So, we're going to queue up a wrench attack. No, no, I don't like the fact that there's three of them. That, that's the part that scares me. Because even when you pause, it's not really paused. It's kind of, time's just moving slowly. So I don't I don't want to deal with three of them right now, to be honest with you. I guess that's a pause, I should say. Um, so we'll fast forward, wait for the guards to patrol for a second. This time, we'll probably go back to the short blade. I promise you I have a plan. Easy money. We'll take their concussive gun, which is also useful. And we'll actually make that our right click for now. So what I want to do here, I want to come around the corner. They're going to see me. I'm going to wrench this boy. Then I'm going to pause, switch to the concussive gun, or rather get the concussive gun ready. And then knock him out. And there you go. We killed uh, two birds with one stone. What else we got here? Long range key cloner. We can definitely use that. Um, 
We took care of two guards there by using the pause function, which is very cool, in my opinion. Let's try to use the long range key cloner. Clone that level two key, and now we might not have to deal with any more guards if we don't want to, but we probably want to. So I'm just gonna hide behind this wall and get the short blade kill. We want to avoid um, alerting the guards in case that's not abundantly clear, but if we wanted to, we could just, you know... Well, they've, they've discovered a body, so they're gonna be real cheesed, but... If we wanted to, um, we could just leave after accomplishing this objective right here. He has spotted me. We managed to beat him on that one, but I'm a little surprised because the wrench has range. So this time I'm not going to capture the ship. I'm just going to go back to my pod and escape. And uh, they sort of don't even know that we were here. So let's deliver to friendly station, please. Get the heck out of here. So yeah, you don't have to capture the ship every time. In a way, I kind of wish... Uh, I don't know. I, I hesitate to say this because it still just by, might be my ignorance. But kind of wish... Some, some of the missions do incentivize capturing it mandatorily, would be the way that I, I guess I would describe it. Um, they, the, the mission objective is capture ship. The rest of the time, it's an implicit, implicit optional objective. Uh, to be honest, I wish they kind of incentivized it a little more and simultaneously made it more difficult because, especially on the early missions, it just seems very easy, but that might be me coming from a position of relative ignorance here. So now we have some money. Um, Let's send some stuff to our stash, like, get rid of the gun, keep the grenade, get rid of the... Oh, does this thing run out? It runs out when it's used two, three times, so it doesn't actually replenish. A lot of stuff replenishes, like, I guess it requires the restockable trait. Yeah, there's tiers of loot, so, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, it exists here. Uh, I don't know, blue, I guess, is just, it's like the rare... No, orange is rare. Blue is uncommon, I guess. I haven't seen anything that goes above that, but we might right now. We got 80 credits, so let's look at some of the stocks here. Um, so this is our pod shop. At the pod shop, we can buy that other pod that I talked about, the angel. Uh, so let's do that. That only cost us 20 credits. By the way, you unlock this stuff the more you play the game. So uh, by completing liberations or like having a liberation available and then going to another beacon and liberating it, uh, you get new stuff in the shop. So it works very much like other roguelites in that sense. Uh, get a silenced shotgun or a quiet quick fire gun. Shots can only be heard from one room away. Lethal, time between shots is fast and there's a silenced gun. 17 credits. I don't know if it, it it's just reusable over and over. We need to find ammunition for it, maybe. I don't really want another weapon. Our existing weapons seem to be working fine. Long-range key cloner. It only costs two. And then this is our miscellaneous shop. Long-range swapper. Teleports, teleporters move you instantly, but each type has unique limitations. So we can swap places with someone. So, for example, one thing I've seen people do that I thought was really cool is um, you could... Aggro a guard that has a lethal weapon, wait for them to shoot at you, pause time, use your swapper to swap places with them, and then they just shot themselves. It's a really cool thing. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that I saw and I went, oh, this game's way smarter than I was given it credit for. Even though it's taken me a little bit of time to crack into that coconut shell and get the delicious meat out, you know? Let's buy a mystery crate, because I'm everything wrong with... Uh, the industry. Our mystery Kate gave us a recharge. Mystery Kate. <laughs> Our mystery crate gave us a rechargeable swapper. Um, it's rechargeable. And it swaps. That's pretty good. Let's uh, put that on our secondary for now. Basically, that was a loot crate. Let's try a hard mission here. Audacious, audacious silence clause. Steal the outer bridge Euler contraption without triggering an alarm. Note from Fiasco. The ship's been on my radar... I don't care if you do the mission, but get on board and check out the terminal I've got marked. I'll, it'll save my people some time and I'll knock $40 off my fee. Don't trigger any alarms. Alarm response time is 20 seconds. Lots of guards, and the guards require a serious kit. So the normal guards just have a concussive gun. The bosses have a shield that reflects all incoming damage. Um, and we can also use subverters. And the subverter is important in this case because it's... Uh, the subverter reverses the shield so that they can't shoot out. In fact, the shots that they shoot from within the shield will reflect back and hit them. Um, 
but they also will let damage in. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. We might want to go with something slightly simpler. This looks like a fit for us. So guards have concussive shotguns and heat sensors. Sorry, bosses do, and guards just have a concussive gun. But there's a lot of turrets on this one. So let, let's try this mission. It seems a little bit more our speed, uh, especially because we have that grenade launcher that we can reuse here. So let's try that out, and we'll try to solve this mission more cleverly. And if anything, I think that might be the chief weakness uh, of the gameplay of Heat Signature, from my perspective, is that early on, it doesn't necessarily force you to be clever. And I, th I think it's a much better game when you are being clever. People always, by the way, when criticisms like that come in, I see the comments. They go, oh, woe is me, they let me play the game the way I want to play it, you know. I, I get the idea that it's, it's a YouTuber just sort of complaining for no reason, but... Uh, it, it took me a little bit of time to understand that this game is more than meets the eye. And that's not necessarily a knock on the game. It's just a knock, to some extent, on its accessibility. Spelunky's the same way. You know, everybody goes, uh, we don't need the concussive gun. By the way, we could steal a lot of this stuff, but a lot of it sells for zero loot. So there's no point to just hoard it if that's in your instincts. Um, Spelunky's the same way first few hours I played it, I don't see what all the fuss is about, it's just like, it seems like an interesting platformer. Uh, only over time does the genius of the design start to uh, make itself more apparent. So, let's try using our, I am a moron man. You will we we're definitely gonna set off the alarm. I thought I had the, what did I do with the grenade? <laughs> yeah, you get back here. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with this alarm. But for now... Oh, God, I'm going to get knocked unconscious. I turned the turret against its owner, though. Look at that. It just murdered a couple of them there. Sorry, I had to go fast. You know what? I just did this so you'd see the value of the angel pod. So we'll remote control the off-world angel here. What we have to do is get close-ish and hit E. It'll suck us back in there. Save us a little bit of time. We're probably going to be captured. I'm not even going to go back on the ship. Because if I go back on the ship and it goes to a beacon, uh, we are going to, we're going to die. So, like, this character is going to die. So instead, I'm just going to accept that I made a terrible mistake there. Can we board these, like, random ships, by the way? Mission failed. That's not a big deal, I think. We can totally board these random ships. I have no idea what happens if we do this. Yeah, that was not a good idea. Uh, don't press A. Don't press A. D... W, left mouse. Save the pod. Save the pod. We've done it. Okay. No. Emergency fuel reserves. Okay, get home, please. This is stuff I've never seen before because I've never tried to... I've never tried to breach one of those ships. I understand you don't have to thrust to keep moving. I played and was very bad at Kerbal Space Program. All right, we made it back on emergency fuel reserves, but our... Emergency fuel capacity is permanently reduced. Okay, let's try to actually succeed on a mission. I don't want to do a war zone one. Well, okay. Few guards. The guards have a heat sensor. The bosses are kind of trash. We got to do a hard mission. Do it for the fans. The ship is flying through hostile territory and will come under heavy missile fire while you're aboard. And the guards have a serious kit. Concussive gun and shield. Except, I'm ready. So yeah, this is Heat Signature. It's 15 bucks. It's incredibly mechanically dense. It's super cool. It's the kind of game I could see myself playing a lot more of. It's also the kind of game I think I need a trip sitter for. I need someone to tell me their emerging gameplay stories about this. Hopefully somebody else in the NLSS crew uh, picks it up because at first glance, it, it really is a game where I think it's more than meets the eye. You need those emerging gameplay stories like, oh, I broke into the ship and then I used my hack grenade launcher to turn all the turrets against people, but then... We were in a war zone, so, like, somebody fired on the ship and turned, uh... We have a key cloner, right? Yeah. Somebody fired on the ship, and then I got blown out through the airlock, and I barely managed to rescue myself, and yada yada. Okay, so we clone that level one key. And, uh... Just take the concussive gun for now? No. Take the subverter grenade launcher. Because I kind of want to mess with this dude's shield. Once we subvert it, it will let, uh, it will let fire in. But actually, I'm going to cancel aim and go back to the key cloner and clone this guy's level two. The reason for that is, um, 
I'm scared that this is going to aggro them. And then they're going to sound the alarm. Oh, God! <laughs> so what ha- You want to talk about emergent gameplay? What happened there? My target was in a room that got blown up by a missile while I was uh, en route to the mission. So I'm going to run now, and I'm going to get back on my pod before I also get murdered here. Good God. That's kind of a cool moment, though. And that's another thing that I think is a big strength is the... Uh, the emergent gameplay from stuff like that happening. As much as that did make me almost defecate myself. Alright, let's finish this one off. I st we still have not done a cool mission. Because we've failed it or have had our chance to do it in the first place ripped away from us because of the fact that it's in a war zone. In my defense, what did I say? I said, I don't want to do this mission, it's in a war zone. But both of the hard level missions were in war zones. So I came back to replenish our stuff. Audacious. Steal the sycamore prototype without triggering an alarm. Many sentry guns. The guards have concussive shotguns. The bosses have concussive shotguns. Let's do it. So you could theoretically, by the way, and I assume this happens the longer your character lives for, you could have multiple uh, loadouts, essentially, as governed by what you keep in your inventory versus what you keep in your stash. So on this one, we go, oh, okay, so there's a lot of sentry guns on this one. We want to take stuff that's good at uh, either avoiding them like a stealth shield, which uh, just makes you invisible in whatever direction you're pointing. Or we want to take uh, stuff that allows us to hack. If you go on a mission that has more guards, you might say, okay, well... Uh, we want to, in that case... There we go. In that case, we want to take... Uh, Stuff that maybe is more conducive to combat. So, we definitely want this grenade launcher to function for us. Because it'll kill these two guys. And then we can just teleport the key card, key card to ourselves. Don't don't turn. Don't turn. He's turning. Alright. Sorry to do this. We'll use our quiet weapon this time. I still want to use the grenade launcher just because we've not done it yet. But this... <laughs> <laughs> you're not giving me a chance to use the cool stuff because you're coming, you're turning right and going intruder, intruder. Now we got to kill the pilot extremely quickly. Um, the pilot is right here. I think we can do it, honestly. Killing the pilot disables the security system, so you can get some really tense and like thrilling moments as a result. Um, so straight up, this is where we use our grenade launcher. Knock that guy dead right off the bat. Here's the pilot. Um, so just let these guys... Oh, Jesus. No, 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 we're good. Just use the short blade. You got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. These guys aren't even aware of what's going on yet. Plenty of time, my dear. Plenty of time. No, we're starting to run out of time. I'm going to take out my concussive shotgun. Peer out around the corner. Knock that guy out. Rinse and repeat. Go with the short blade. Kill the pilot. Okay, so now the alarm is dead. What, what else can we take here? Just concussive shotguns. If we ever ran out of ammo, we could grab those. All right, steal this. Taking the Sycamore prototype. You have no idea what this is or what it does. Maybe we should find out. Um, just don't get killed by this thing. And we've now managed to escape. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like a little mini micro Hotline Miami in space, but with more systems. It's not to say it's better than Hotline Miami, or worse. Hotline Miami is a masterpiece in its own right, and I like the second one as well. Uh, this is different, but also very, very interesting. We completed an audacious mission. We did, we did trigger an alarm, though, so we didn't get the bonus for that. But, yeah, this is Heat Signature. As you can probably tell from me playing it, I got a lot to learn. But uh, I, I want to learn it because there's a lot going on here that seems really, really neat. By the way, stuff we didn't touch on, multiple characters. You can select them at any time if you wanted. Um, sometimes it's a little finicky to stand in the right spot, I suppose. But, yeah, we could start playing as uh, December Mid-Thunder instead. It's not Mid-Thunder. Mid-Thunder. Um, if we wanted to. And uh, assuming these characters live, I guess you can come back to them at a later date. Maybe you even want to swap 
uh, as time goes on in order to take advantage of their unique starting weapons. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, like, lots, lots still to learn. I feel like I've barely even scratched the surface. So consider this a, uh, a recommendation for Heat Signature, a game that is extremely interesting. Not 100% sold in the visual style, pretty much everything else I'm into. For now, it's 15 bucks. Available on Steam. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And of course, if you like Heat Signature, check it out for yourself. I give it a recommendation that'll be linked in the video description below to pick it up on Steam. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time.